So the advancements uh, that are being that we're looking forward to in healthcare. Our most advanced assets in a uh, phase two study across the United States uh, as we speak uh, for the study of a treatment, a novel treatment for acute gout and the pain associated with acute gout. We anticipate wrapping up that trial at the end of this year and then heading on to phase three next year. As you can imagine, as the, as the population ages, nobody wants to be on these medications long term. And now we're able to offer a device called the Washman Flex. And this is done through an outpatient procedure in the cardiac cath lab. It's minimally invasive. Our first patient that had it done yesterday had it done in the morning and was home later that afternoon, well on their way to recovery and no longer needing that uh, long-term anticoagulation therapy. So we're really excited to be able to offer this in addition to many other great clinical services here at Westwood West. A lot of people put things off that they had been putting up, uh, putting on the calendar, whether it's colonoscopies or blood pressure checks or whatnot. And, and for a little bit of time, that's fine. Um, you know, we have had a few patients um, who've come back in and now they have medical issues that are not controlled so you know that that just brings home the point of uh, that you can't necessarily run from your medical problems <laughs>
on the food chair board of directors many years ago. And when the opportunity came in to fill in as head food lady, um, I've been honored to lead this incredible organization for the last three years. Perfect. Uh, and chef, from the kitchen with your mama to culinary school to restaurants all over the world. And now you're here in beautiful Ventura County, uh, a chef for the prestigious Four Seasons Resort Coin and Candor Inside. I can't wait to hear a little bit more about your story. Well, hello, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having us, uh, having me here. All right. My name is Jesus Medina. Uh, lucky enough, I've been with the company for eight years so far. Uh, before that, I was able to be a little bit of working in Mexico, where I'm originally from. Uh, I did a little bit of also a stage in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I was able to join a cruise, a cruise company and work around the Mediterranean, to, you know, do some French cooking and learn a little bit of Mediterranean food. Then I was able to come back to Mexico and then eventually join the the, the company. Recently, I've been here just a, a couple of years where we were able to open this great project, our, our brand new restaurant, right, which is Coin and Candy, our signature restaurant at the hotel. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Looking forward to hearing a little bit more about each of you. I wish we had more than 40 minutes because I know uh, the information that you have to share, the stories that you have to share uh, could go much longer than 40 minutes. Uh, but we'll see what we can get out of you in the next 40. So we're going to start with just a few questions. I promise they won't hurt. Uh, first question goes to Hector, owner of Ventura's very popular Cafe Zach. Um, Hector, business shuts down in March and then opens for takeout only and then opens a bit more for outdoor dining. Tell us how you've kind of had to adjust your business there at Cafe Zach since COVID-19. Uh, it's you know it's it's been a little bit of the change and yeah this has been challenging but first of all you know all of us at Cafe Zach we feel incredibly lucky because we have received so much love and support for our community friends I mean through the entire uh, COVID crisis uh, it's been truly a blessing and I'm happy to announce that we recently opened opened a new and brand new outdoor patio dining, uh, which allow us to welcome back our guests for the first time since March. And I mean, Ventura weather, you really can't beat it. So it, it just kind of sets this perfect stage for some outdoor dining. It's been beautiful. It's been really, really beautiful. We are really, really happy that, you know, that we have, we, we were able, you know, to build this beautiful outdoor patio. It's just amazing. Yeah. But you know what? I'll tell you what. The, the COVID has been changing a lot. And the short answer on that, on that, you know, my business has been changing every, every, every way. So nothing could uh, have prepared us uh, for many challenges. We face uh, the COVID crisis when, you know, began an in effort to keep our doors open. We began offering takeout and no contact delivery. That was back in March. In March, At that point, we have no idea if Cafe Zach will make it. Well, I'm glad to see that you were able to adjust so amazingly to all of this. Looking forward to talking to you a little bit more. I'm gonna try and get that homemade caramel sauce recipe out of you before the day's over. Oh my God, I'm gonna give it to you, that's the best. Okay. Um, I'm gonna shoot it over to Monica, uh, CEO of Food Share. I know you've been just a little bit busy at the food bank since COVID-19 hit our community, specifically with these drive-through pop-up distributions that you've been doing, 133 of them today to be exact. I may have some inside information. Um, um, and that's on top of your normal operations and programs. In a minute or less, if you can, tell us what Food Share is doing to keep Ventura County fed right now. In a minute or less? Really? You couldn't <laughs> even give me an extra minute there? <laughs> Well, and, and pre-COVID, we were serving about 75,000 people every single month. And uh, right now we're serving over 150,000 people. We're holding these drive-up, drive-through emergency food distributions uh, six days a week in order to be able to meet the increased need. Uh, there's never We've never seen anything before like this. And we don't exactly know when it's going to end, but the good news is that Food Share is here to be able to serve all of those in need as long as we have the support of our community. 
I think that's the biggest question everyone's been asking you, right? Is how much longer, how much longer? And it's like, if you have the crystal ball, the magic <laughs> ball, please share it with us. Please. We'd really love to know what that, what that looks like in terms of just the overall amount of food that's going out the doors. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When, you, when well, you get that crystal ball, let me know. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. I'll track it down and then you're my Amazon. First ball, Order I it on Amazon. <laughs> Um, all right, Chef Jesus, looking forward to talking to you a little bit more. I know you probably had a very similar experience to Hector at Cafe Zach in terms of everything shuts down and then reopens a little bit for takeout and then reopens a little bit more uh, for outdoor dining. But not only did you and the Four Seasons have to follow county guidelines and restrictions, you as a restaurant inside Four Seasons had to also follow Four Seasons kind of corporate guidelines and restrictions. So you kind of had double duty there. So what are you and the team doing at Coin and Candor and at Four Seasons to adapt to COVID-19 and still offer your uh, services to the community? Correct. I and mean, those, those are all very important points, right? Because we do take very seriously uh, safety at Four Seasons, right? Our first priority is to ensure the safety of our guests and their staff while they're at property, right? So right before we were able to reopen the, the property, we had to do a very big, massive training for all the staff, and we had to launch this new program, which is called Lead with Care, right? So what this means is just to, we have to enhance and kind of like be more strict on everything regarding safety at the hotel, right? A few examples that we're doing currently right now, it's, um, before you are able to come into the hotel or the restaurant, right, every guest and staff has to go through a screening process, right, at the entrance of the hotel. And then they go through a, a several questions regarding COVID, COVID symptoms, right? Also, all staff members, we're all wearing face masks the whole time. We're respecting our six feet distance, right, uh, as part of the LA and state county guidelines, right? We're doing it here as well. And you will see some of the employees, especially in the f and outlets, wearing uh, face shields, right? And, you know, every table has to be sanitized and clean after every use, right? So every, we have uh, hand sanitations around the hotel for staff and uh, hotel guests to be able to use it. Um, so we do take this very seriously. Good. I, that's, that's so glad to hear. Obviously, the health and safety of our community is paramount, but also you as a business and making sure that you guys are healthy and safe and all your staff uh, and continuing to operate, too. So thank you. We're going to get some more questions, I promise. Uh, so much uh, great information so far. But I want to take a short break now for some music because just as much as food is good for the soul, so is music. Our music director, Paul Piazza, is going to introduce our guest artist today. Take it away, Paul. Jennifer, you're doing a great job with this and making me really hungry. I don't know about that whole music is more important than food thing. Let's let's make them equal for the time being. But uh, today we've got two great musicians with a great story. This is Larry Tuttle and Novi Novog. Uh, Novog. They are husband and wife, and they formed the band String Planet with some friends of theirs many years ago. They both play really interesting instruments. You're going to see Novi on the electric viola, which is pretty uncommon. And Larry's going to be playing a really interesting, unique instrument called the Chapman stick. You're going to see him moving his fingers in some interesting ways to make some cool sounds. After uh, after they made the band, they took a hiatus, but because of COVID, this was a great opportunity to put the band back together, play some tunes. And uh, they've been putting on streaming concerts for a lot of our friends and for a wider audience. And we're happy to bring them today to all of us. So we're going to hear some music right now from Stream. Ring Planet. This is Larry Tuttle and Novi Novog, and they're going to play for us something fun right off the bat. This is the Big Pig Jig.
that was just amazed me. So, oh, thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you, Paul, for introducing them. Uh, we're back. We're going to get to know the tunes a little bit better. I'm going to take it off with Monica because that song, Big, 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 kind of got me thinking about this time of year. And this time of year is normally the winter, so I'm scared with the social things that are happening. But specifically, the livestock auction, the senior livestock auction, which this year has been involved in for many, many years. Um, although the fair is happening this year, and the livestock auction is happening in sort of a smaller capacity, so uh, the, the story could be so that there are many uh, sort of livestock they raise. But talk about what that kind of loss means to food fair in terms of the food that we're raising, and kind of what you have to do to compensate for that a little bit. Monica there? Oh, it's still Paul. Can you answer that question, Paul? I don't know <laughs> how much time do we got. I got to. <laughs> I'll take it, Paul. I'll take it from here. Really, I'll take it from here. So, <laughs> Jen, yes, this is right now. We should be at the fair, the Junior Livestock Auction. Food Share has been involved every year with it, and we get an incredible amount of protein, as you can imagine, from the Junior Livestock Auction. Uh, since there is that is not happening now, they are doing it virtually, but we are seeing an increased decreased amount of food um, ever since um, COVID hit. Um, first, we saw it in the grocery stores and that everybody, while they were stocking up on TP, they were also stocking up on a lot of shelf-stable food, which is beans, rice, pasta, eggs, TP, did I mention that? Um, all the things that, that people wanted to make sure they have um, in, in hand, which means we have a lot less to be able to rescue at the end of the day that they could no longer sell. So with that, uh, we have had to change our process in that we've had to purchase a lot more of our food that we distribute, namely at these emergency food distributions. We normally spend about $50,000 a month, and now we are spending about $300,000 a month. So again, that all comes back to the support from the community. Can't do it without the support. Yeah, thank you for that insight. I don't think people realize, um, you know, when they're going to the store, of course, to get food from themselves, kind of the ripple down effect of what that means uh, for their local food bank. So kind of thanks for sharing where where the, the, the where the food goes in the county and, and how it gets out to the people it needs. So uh, that county, the community support is is uh, vital, as you mentioned. So um, going over to Hector now. So Hector, I've dined at Cafe Zach before, of course, and although it's been a while, so please forgive me. And I mentioned I could talk this entire session about that homemade caramel sauce. Let's get into the good stuff, right? Let's talk about your menu and some of the deliciousness that you have going on over there at Cafe Zach. Tell me all about it. Well, you know, we, um, of course, and, and, and I got to mention this because my, my brother-in-law, who is my chef, and he has been my only chef since 2000 when I bought the business. So he is, uh, we, we don't really specialize on anything. I mean, a lot of people talk about my filet mignon, but I'm going to be honest to you. Uh, all of my dishes are absolutely amazing. Um, right now, where we, where we are doing, we are sourcing the freshest fish locally. And uh, right now, you know, the fish, the halibut, the sea bass, it's just amazing. But see, um, this is a dream come true for, for us because I I remember since I was 13 years old, that's when I started to work in the restaurant business in, back in Puerto Vallarta. I am from Puerto Vallarta. So I came here when I was 17 years old and I did not know not a single person here, but you know, everything that I've been doing is just working and working and my dream came true. In 2000, when I bought the business, I talked to my brother-in-law and I said, you know what, we're gonna build the best restaurant in Ventura. So him and I, we, we, we were very, very close together to bring in all the recipes, but one of the things you know, that I talked to him and I said, you know what, we're not gonna be doing just Italian or just Mexican, I mean, I can describe, you know, my restaurant as, uh, my restaurant is not America. Well, it is, it is kind of American, yeah, but I, uh, but we, we have pastas, meat, seafood, poultry, wild game. Um, and once in a while, you know, we came up with dishes, uh, authentic Mexican food. So we, uh, my, my, my menu is, it's, it's really extensive. 
a little something for everyone, no matter kind of what your preferences are when you visit Cafe Zach. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Hector. Um, Chef Medina, you guys, Coin and Candor, I've, as you mentioned, has been open for just over a year. So congratulations on reaching that milestone. So let's move on to the deliciousness that's over there at Coin and Candor and kind of what you've created as you've had this time. Right. Thanks. This is what I'm good at, right? Let's talk about food. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, you know, uh, our coin in Canada, what we focus on, we're a California brasserie, right? What does that mean, right? So it means that we just work with seasonal ingredients, right? So we change our, our menu by seasonality, right? So at least three times a year. And we are very lucky to be in California, especially in Ventura, right? So we work with a lot of local farmers and purveyors, right? Everything no more than 10 mile rating, right? It's, uh, we are lucky enough that I can just travel to Santa Monica and then I just go to the farmer's market. And what I see there is kind of like the inspiration where we kind of built our menu, right? Besides that, we also do a lot of wood fire techniques, right? So in the kitchen, we have a wood fire oven, right? So a lot of our dishes and of our recipes has an element of that wood fire, you know, the smokiness of the oak, the maple, the mesquite, right? So, and it's a very interesting mixture of, um, Mediterranean and a little bit of my background, which is a little bit Hispanic. So you have a nice, nice fusion there, right? Uh, for sure, one of our favorite uh, dishes, I mean, it's, uh, we have a whole red snapper, which we just cook it in the wood fire grill and people love it. People just come here and crave it and uh, they come often, you know? One of the favorites, I haven't been able to remove it from the menu since we opened. I don't think I can, you know, it's just the one you you have there, it's our signature dish, right? So you're a customer coming into your own restaurant. You're going to sit down and you haven't eaten for five days. So you are just want the best meal in front of you. And of course, I know as chef, you're going to say everything on your menu is great. Of course it is. What are you ordering off your own menu? Well, I'm very creative with myself, but definitely my favorite. It's our wood fire snapper because it reminds me of, the, of my childhood. And uh, it also reminds me of the time I spent in Punta Mita working, you know, where I actually was able to really learn about fresh fish, you know, that you, you take it from the ocean and it doesn't smell like fish, it just smells like ocean, right? You, you see the color of the eye, you see everything, the texture. So that's one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites is also reminds me when I was a kid, you know, walking the streets and just eating like street corn, right? So it's a beautiful street corn that we get from a local purveyor. And then a little bit of queso fresco, you know, some chili ancho aioli. Just let the ingredients talk, you know. I love it. I, I literally wrote all of it down. How long? How late are you open tonight? Oh, we're open until ten thirty p.m. Perfect. So Perfect. So, Chef, you you mentioned this, and Hector mentioned this as well as kind of the the fresh local produce that we're so lucky to live in. So, let's bring it kind of full circle all the way around back to Monica because. A lot of people don't really connect food banks with all the fresh produce and the, the beautiful farming land and ag partners that we have here. So, Monica, talk a little bit about that partnership that we're blessed enough to have uh, with the local farming community. We we are when we're when we rescue food, it's not just necessarily from our retail partners. It's also we partner with every single grower, manufacturer, uh, farmer, port of Wainimi. Um, there is so much uh, ag in our in our county that there is a there's a plethora of produce that we can rescue that is available, and so we bring that in and we get that through our network of pantry partners, um, 190 different nonprofits in Ventura County, and we're able to get that food out to people who are in need. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing, the network that we have. And again, we're so lucky to live where we live because there's so many farms right in our backyard. Uh, and just kind of a little, uh, another piece of that is people what don't know is that they, a lot of people have orange trees, apple trees, pears uh, trees in their own backyard that kind of overgrow or, or they have excess of. And, and food share can accept that too, right? We can, even though gleaning is how we started 42 years ago, um, and that is um, collecting the uh, additional food that's available in the orchards and, and the farms and the fields. Um, we still do our gleaning. It's a volunteer run um, activity, and uh, we'll, we'll come and pick your avocados, your pomegranates, your tangerines, whatever it is that you have. Um, we'll come pick it, and we will get it distributed to people in need. 
Perfect. And then real quick before we go to our next uh, break, I want to go back to Hector because I asked Chef Medina this and I always have to ask uh, either the owner or the chef at every restaurant what it is that they order because then you know that's that's when I go into a restaurant, I want to know what the chef or what the owner recommends. So Hector, you're, you're a customer, you're coming into Cafe Zach, you're sitting in your beautiful outdoor dining. What are you ordering? To be honest, and I will order the boar shank, roasted wild boar shank. This is a dish that is very unique and you will not find a boar shank around here. But my chef, he makes it, it's very tender, kind of like osobuco style with a rich demi glaze. Oh my God, it's, I'm gonna call it, you know, this is one of my signature dishes. All right, I wrote that down too. Got a, I got a good list coming up this week. My family's going to be real happy with me. So let's take another music break. Uh, but at first, I actually want to bring up Larry from String Planet uh, and have a little chat with him before he plays us another one of his great. Hi, Larry. Hey, how you doing? Good. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that instrument and, and how you you and your wife kind of both decided on such an interesting combination of instruments and kind of what it's like being a husband and wife musical team too. Ah. <laughs> there are many adventures involved in that. That's a deep subject. Maybe we won't go too far. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I had discovered the Chapman stick in the, in the eighties. I saw um, Tony Levin play with Peter Gabriel and King Crimson. And it, it was the most marvelous thing. Um, the stick is actually local. It's a, it's an, it was invented in Laurel Canyon in about 1969 by a guy named Emmett Chapman. And Emmett is still building the instruments in his home in Woodland Hills with his um, family business. I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing. And I've spent, uh, I don't even know how long, over the past uh, 25, 30 years, every time I play it, I'm explaining what it is. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a combination of bass and guitar both at once. And you play it with a tapping technique with no uh, uh, plucking or strumming. That's the short answer. That's and that's an incredible answer too, and I'm sure it's always kind of that wow factor, right? It's it's unique and not very often seen, so everybody always wants to know about it. Exactly. Uh, I, I hear that you're also a quite an accomplished composer and a double bass player. Do you have any um, exciting upcoming projects that you'd like to share with us? Well, um, the honest truth is, I mean, I write for large ensembles. I write for concert bands and orchestras, and um, you guys know um, from what I've been hearing today about the restaurants. I mean, the, the, the large the large orchestras and the bands, they have it even worse. They aren't meeting at all. So the honest truth is I'm kind of on hiatus from that. These days, uh, these days and in this world, it's all about the streaming. So um, Novi and I are doing, starting to do regular streaming concerts, like maybe every month, every six weeks or something like that. Um, you, we always notify people about them on our Facebook page. If you go to... Uh, uh, Larry Tuttle, Novi Novog Facebook page. There's a picture of us playing our instruments. You can't miss it. And, uh, you know, sign up to be our friend. And we'll, we'll let you know that the streaming, con playing from our living room, you know, when I took music, they said, hey, see the stages of the world. I didn't know I would be playing in front of my couch. Well, we're excited to see it again. So I'll let you go so you can go get set up over Thank there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So everyone stick around. Uh, Larry and String Planet are going to get ready for us again, play some music. Uh, it's called Lady Madonna. We're very excited to hear this. Um, and, and he brings up a great point. You know, just we thought restaurants and, and other businesses, we didn't think about musicians and they just bring such a joy um, to the world. So please, uh, Facebook page right down there. Check him out. Check in at him and his wife playing right in front of the couch. Uh, but that's okay because music, again, is good for the soul and we will take it. So with that, here is String Planet with Lady Madonna.
live from the exclusive living room of Strength Planet, Lady Madonna. Thank you so much, Larry and Novi. That was just fantastic. I want to bring it back to our panelists. We've just been having so much fun with them, and I hope you've been learning all the great information that they have to share. Uh, Hector, Jesus, Monica, I'm excited. Uh, as we kind of get close to the wrap time, I just want to give you guys the floor to kind of offer some final thoughts. Um, make sure that you guys tell us where we can go to visit your website, check it out, donate, visit, eat, all of it. Um, so H Hector, Kathy, Zach, let's start with you and some final thoughts. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for having me. It's been a really pleasure, yes, and I really enjoy it. Uh, yes, I would like to invite everybody, please, come into Cafe Zag. Cafe Zag, we are located at 1095 East Thompson Boulevard in Ventura. Uh, we are open for lunch Monday to Friday, 11.30 to 2 o'clock. And we do dinners Monday through Saturday from 5.30, I'm sorry, 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Now, we, we have to do some changes, yeah. <laughs> pivot, pivot, pivot. Um, <laughs> And please don't forget to ask for me because uh, if you're going to come over, I, I'm i here every single day and you will have a personal attention from myself. Okay? So you can visit us at www.cafezac.blog and that's where my menu is and the hours and you can get all the info that you would like to get in there. Thank you, Hector. And I absolutely implore you guys that homemade caramel sauce, I'm not joking, you'll thank me once you go. Uh, let's go to Chef Jesus. Tell us about uh, some final thoughts that you guys have over that point in candor. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me. You know, this has been great. Um, and then I want to take the opportunity to just invite everyone who's listening and watching in the community, right? Our doors are open. You're more than welcome, right? Um, come come here, have a good time with us, have great food, great service, right? At the restaurant, Coin and Candor, or at the facilities of the hotel, right? Um, you can find us at uh, coinencounter.com, right, or Open Table. You're happy, you're welcome to do any reservation. Just just call in. We'll be happy to take care of it, right? And I'm looking forward to see you here. Thank you, Chef. Looking forward to visiting you and your team uh, at the beautiful Four Seasons Coin and Candor located inside. Uh, so check them out. And last, certainly not least, uh, Monica White over at Foodshare. Thank you, Jen. It's been such a pleasure getting to see you Zoom wise. Um, but what I would like to be able to do is, is send you to our website. This is where at foodshare.com is where you can find everything you need to know. If you are looking for food, if you would like to donate, or if you would like to sign up for a volunteer activity. And speaking of volunteer activities, we have been so fortunate to have the Air National Guard helping us since March in a new location where we've had to expand in order to be able to make sure that we're, we're compliant with the social distancing. And we have a quick video to show you exactly what that looks like. I hope. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. And if not, <laughs> foodshare.com, where you can find out how you can help foodshare. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. I want to bring back uh, Paul Piazza, our musical director, to tell us uh, a little bit more about what we have coming up, uh, what you have coming up in the next couple of weeks. Paul? Thanks, Jennifer. In upcoming weeks, we have uh, the return of the Hamlin House Brass Brigade, featuring my uh, yours truly on trumpet and voice and a little bit of piano. We also have, uh, soon after that, Yoshi Masuda, concert cellist, international renown, and he's also the head 
uh, uh, the chair of the performing music department at California Lutheran University, as well as more great artists. But I wanted to make sure everybody knew that we love featuring live, local, great acts on this show. So if you at home have a suggestion for somebody that you might want to hear featured on this show, we would love to hear. And you can make that suggestion to us by visiting our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash four at four forum. And if you send us a message, uh, we would love to be able to get in touch with that band or individual mission, uh, musician, singer, songwriter, and see if we could feature them on the show. Along those lines, as Larry said, the pandemic has been especially tough for our SoCal musical artist scene. So if you'd like to support the musicians you heard today, please show them some love and leave a tip by visiting peoplemedia.live. And if you do that, we can ensure that live music happens in whatever format, streaming or in person for a long time to come. And with that, back to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Paul. Everyone, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed uh, our panel, our music. Uh, everything was just so wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us next Thursday for every and every Thursday for Four at Four. You can see the upcoming programs at the website, peoplemedia.live. That's peoplemedia.live. Next week, we are pleased to welcome a great panel of women on corporate boards uh, in leadership roles featuring Laura Moreno Lucas, who will be moderating virtually from San Francisco, uh, featuring Betsy Berkemer, author of The Board Games, Pam Kessler, CFO and co-president LTC Properties, and board member at Physicians Realty Trust, both NYSE companies. Susan Steen, former EVP at Warner Brothers, who's looking to join corporate boards, and Deb Richards, LPGA pro golfer and coach of C's on T's. Learn more and register for the 4 at 4 forums at peoplemedia.live, always free and always at 4 on Thursdays. And now, as we like to say in broadcasting, to play us out, here's String Planet. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>